Welcome to Cyber UK TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Vikan Camrose, the Minister for AI and Intellectual Property at DSIT and with responsibility for cybersecurity. We're delighted you're joining us. Um, so first of all, welcome to Cyber UK. What's your impression of seeing the cybersecurity community come together? Um, it's tremendously exciting. I'm told we now have over 2,000 people here. It just shows how, how, um, how exciting it is that the Belfast cybersecurity community are uh, all coming here today. Um, and, I, and I think uh, so importantly, we're seeing uh, in figures that my department is releasing today, we're seeing now 300 million of investment in the sector this year. We're seeing uh, very significant growth of the sector. Um, and that, of course, is not just growth for, for the sector's own sake. It's a sector that, that um, creates enormous value for all uh, of our work in the UK and, and helps the whole of the UK economy to grow, prosper and succeed. Yeah, and of course, recently the Prime Minister's put a lot of onus on science and technology with the creation of your department, the Department of Science, Innovation and Technology. What's your, what's your uh, view on the health of the cybersecurity ecosystem? Um, I'm very encouraged by, by what I see uh, today. I think um, so many people are looking at, at cybersecurity to kind of come in as a career. Uh, it's clear that a great many organizations of all sizes are really starting to recognize the importance and the benefits of, of high levels of cyber awareness and, and acquiring that, um, that sophistication. Um, I'm uh, slightly concerned by some of the figures that we're seeing today that suggest that some of the smaller organizations uh, need to become a little bit more cyber aware for their own right in order to protect their own assets and protect their customers too. But overall, I think the picture is overwhelmingly a positive and exciting one. Well, of course, at the National Cybersecurity Center, we have services designed specifically for small businesses. So the more that people can kind of come to those services and use them, the better for their cybersecurity. Yeah, and I think it's down to all of us to encourage all of these organizations, the smaller ones particularly, and the charities to really take advantage of these brilliant tools that are available. So what are DSIT's priorities for cybersecurity? Um, so, I, I mean, obviously the main priority of all is, is to keep everybody safe and secure uh, when they're connected and online. Uh, and a first really important bit of that is, is protecting people at source and at scale. And when I say at source, I, I mean that when you buy um, a connected device of any kind, whether you're a person or, or, or part of an organization, uh, if you have a connected device, you can be confident um, that that device meets minimum online safety standards. And you should understand what those standards are uh, and be able to compare the safety profiles of different and, and competing devices. Um, that's at source, but also at scale. And this is really important. You know, we're, I think all of us know now that we're really in a fast moving period for technology. You know, a few months ago, barely anyone was talking about AI. Uh, now everybody is talking AI a great deal and it's a fast moving thing. And we have to be able to operate in an agile, flexible way and at scale and responding to emerging technologies as, as they come. Um, the second bit of that is just making sure, as we were discussing a little earlier, making sure that companies are properly managing their own residual risk. And that goes from the very large, you know, the, the kind of core national infrastructure. And our modeling suggests that, that a successful attack on a core national infrastructure piece, you know, maybe health system or, or a, a utility, uh, that can take about 1.5% off national GDP. So there's an absolute crisis that we have to avoid. Uh, and that's key, but also at the smaller end of the scale, making sure, as we were saying, that smaller organizations and even charities need to be aware of their own risks and the risks they're presenting to their customers and to their donors. Um, and lastly, and I think this is something I've been doing a lot while here in Belfast, making sure that we have the pipeline of talent coming in for, for great and exciting careers in cybersecurity. And I've been really encouraged uh, by my uh, uh, by the time I've been spending with Cyber First, an organization designed to do just that. How many young people are coming in for these tremendous new career opportunities in cybersecurity? Fantastic. And it, you mentioned AI. It can't be that long we've had a minister for AI in government, but you are that minister. So it's great, it's great to have you here. And it would be great to get your reflections on what the cybersecurity implications of AI are. Yeah. So. Um, Ever since I've worked in technology, um, there's always been the, the 
the equilibrium between attack uh, cybersecurity and defense cybersecurity always slightly favored defense. Defense seemed to be a slightly easier job, except for the fact that uh, people were, were tended to be the weakest link um, in that chain. Now, I think AI coming on uh, changes that dynamic in, in ways that we can't really see yet. Uh, so it makes defense stronger. It makes you better able to, for example, spot a, a hardware Trojan. Um, it, it makes you able to spot patterns that, that you would otherwise have missed. But it also makes attack stronger, uh, not least because one thing that we've seen ChatGPT or the large language models are really good at is fooling humans into thinking that, that they are uh, themselves human. So. Um, it remains to be seen how much it changes the, the dynamic between cyber attack and cyber defense. Um, it is something we really have to keep a very close eye on because, because if, it, uh, if it does make attack more powerful relative to defense, then I think uh, we are going to have to, to, um, to, to really be, be at our most alert. Really interesting. Of course, we, we've seen that large language models like ChatGPT could could of course write really sophisticated spear phishing emails or, or mass phishing emails as well, which is which is obviously a, a particular cause for concern. Yeah. Um, but Vikan Camrose, thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the conference. We hope you enjoy the city of Belfast and uh, we will see you again soon. Great, great pleasure. Thank you very much.